got this wonderful letter actually from Sandy Kidd, the inventor of the gyroscope uh, anti-gravity machine. Let me read it and then we'll watch the second part of Sandy's film about building the gyro and his contact with Eric Lathwaite. Dear Professor Simon, about 35 years ago, I had an idea to offer to deliver vertical non-neutronian thrust. If I could somehow rotate a pair of opposed but equal weights at an angle above the horizontal. At the time, I knew this was impossible, but I never lost touch with the idea. Several years later, while watching Eric Lathwaite's lectures on TV, I realized that under certain conditions, I could make the weights do the impossible and raise themselves to a position above the horizontal. I built a new device and it's capable of demonstrating all of my claims. The device is comprehensively fitted out with rotation speed telemetry sensors, one for each of the two gyroscopes and one for the machine rotation. It is fitted with four strain gauges on the vertical swinging arms to demonstrate the loss of angular momentum as the rotation speed of the gyroscopes are increased, the outputs being fed through a slip ring to the outside of the device. I can let you have photographs of my new device. Best wishes, Sandy Kidd. How wonderful. I'd love to see it, Sandy. Let's now watch Sandy's film part two, where he shows his device to Eric Lathwaite after he saw the lectures. It was November the 21st, 1984, my 47th birthday. I went into the garage, started leveling up, and then it happened. The machine lifted against the counterweight and stayed up. I could hardly believe it. It was a feeling of sheer joy and relief. I'd done it. I'd cracked it. Throughout this project, Sandy had worked alone without help from experts, not even from Professor Lathwaite, who had inspired him 10 years before on television. Now, in his hour of jubilation, he was the man Sandy wanted to give his news to first of all. Well, I've watched this effect for 18 months now and I couldn't figure out what it was. But I've now proved conclusively that uh, from zero to a thousand revs, you're absolutely correct in what you said. Sandy was so obviously genuine and so almost self-effacing with what he'd done. And of course, it was gyroscopes. And I asked him a few questions, such as, um, are they offset gyroscopes with skewed axes and so on? And uh, when he said that, I think, well, he's probably got the ingredient. And what does it do? And he said, well, um, it, it will lose some of its weight. And at this point, you think, well, I can't afford not to see this because I could be missing the big one. And when he was willing to bring it to me, as opposed to having me go up to the north of Scotland, well, of course he could come and see me. I think I've got nothing to lose. I think this man's the one in a hundred who's different. You do get a sort of feel for it. You, you can spot the cranks a mile off. Make the torque reaction of the gyro overcome the centrifugal force. There's a yeah, point yeah. where these yeah. are free flying, and I expected the vertical vertical motion. Okay. Yeah, and it appears to work quite well on that. Professor Lathwaite is himself a great visionary, a man who has constantly sought to push back the barriers of technology. In Sandy's machine, he saw the reflection of his own beliefs. And this would work in outer space, so it works on just on this bend. At the moment, the only method we know of traveling through space is by shoveling matter out of the back very fast in order to go forwards. And even science fiction writers, the people in Star Wars, can do no better than talk about twin iron engines in which they squirt irons out of the back. They're still sending matter out one way in order to propel forwards in the shot and gun manner. 
Now, Sandy's machine, where it differs, is that he's produced a force by converting some angular momentum, which is easy to generate from things like nuclear submarines engines. And if you can convert angular momentum into linear momentum and propel yourself forward without shoveling material out of the back, then you could go to the next galaxy on a teaspoonful of uranium. The professor's experience with similar projects convinced him that Sandy's idea could only be developed with proper funding. This meant contacting someone who could match bright ideas with venture capital. Such a person was Martin Rose, a high technology consultant who chose America as the place to test reaction to Sandy's machine. But why go to America? Well, first of all, America is the land where dreams come true. You have a film star who's now a president, uh, so anything's possible. And logically, therefore, it's a place where a reactionless motor, which sounds like an absurd idea, uh, should be presented. There's no problem with gaining attention. There's no problem with funding an idea like that. The key issue is its application, the verification of that uh, idea, and who verifies it. And if you're raising money to set up a company to drive an applications development team, you have to have the right people. The Americans recommended university research, and that is what is now happening at Dundee, where Sandy has been awarded a consultancy. He is one of a university research team trying to establish how exactly the machine is producing its lifting force and whether that force can be made more powerful. This investigative work is being carried out under some security in a small lockfast laboratory tucked away in the basement region of the university's engineering block. Working alongside the inventor is Dr. Ian Davidson, a lecturer in mechanical engineering who specializes in dynamics. What we hope to do is a series of tests to try and see what the overall performance of the machine is. And these will be broken down basically into an initial set of tests which will measure the sort of overall properties, followed by a series of more complicated tests which might help to tell us something about us, what is happening inside the machine. The first test will be some overall force measurements on the lifting effect and we've set up a force transducer, just a little lever. And on the lever, we place what we call a strain gauge, which when it's stretched, gives an electrical signal. And that we can display on a counter or an oscilloscope. It certainly is a very complicated phenomenon, so it will need a bit of time before we can actually pinpoint the actual mechanism which is creating this force. It's a difficult problem, mathematically, and I would have thought that it's the sort of thing that we might well contemplate uh, as a research project for a three-year PhD or something of that nature. As interesting as that? I would say so, yes. Because the machine generates such momentum, the university authorities have insisted that it can only be run behind a strong metal guard. This caution over the safety aspect of the device is matched by Dr. Davidson's own reserve when he is asked if Sandy's machine will provide mankind with a new source of energy. I would prefer to answer that question some considerable time later when we have a much clearer idea of what the machine actually does and the extent of this phenomenon. At the moment, uh, it is an interesting phenomenon. Let's examine it and see what might come from it. One man at Dundee University who harboured no doubts about Sandy's machine was Dr Bill Ferrier, a senior physicist. Like Professor Lathwaite, he was deeply impressed with both man and machine. Bill and I became great friends through this machine and he often came around at night, spent many hours discussing gyroscopic theory. The two of them would sit discussing the machine and what it could do, what it could be used for, They'd work out formulas, there'd be papers lying on the coffee table all over the settee. Eventually I gave up and went away through to my bed. But the pair of them still sat here all hours discussing the machine. Bill was working on a mathematical formula to explain away the workings of the device and he informed me that he was getting pretty close to putting some answers together. Unfortunately, Bill died in late summer 1986, and uh, since then, nobody's been able to reproduce his work. But Bill did leave this written endorsement of my work. 
There is no doubt that the machine does produce vertical lift. I am fully satisfied that this device needs further research and development. I have expressed myself willing to help Mr. Kidd, whose engineering ability is beyond question and for whom I have now the greatest respect. I do not as yet understand why this device works, but it does work. The technological possibilities of such a device are enormous. Its commercial exploitation must be worth millions. I have not seen anything of this type before. I find it interesting, and as a dynamicist, I would very much like to be able to track down what is actually happening. It may take you years, but if you know you're going to get there, and you've got the patience and the perseverance, you've got all the ingredients you need. My prediction is eventually I will win through. I've got this far, it was a struggle. I have got to assume that having got into a university establishment, that I'm winning. It's taken time, but I'm getting there. And uh, I have got to allow the academic chappies to make up their own mind at the end of the day. Eventually, they've got to come round to the same conclusion as me. Is it going to change the world? I think it will, if it's allowed. Emmanuel Velikovsky, the famous Russian scientist and writer, put it this way. What I want to impress upon you is that science today, as in the days of Newton, lies before us as a great uncharted ocean, and we have not yet sailed very far from the coast of ignorance.
Thank <laughs> you.